Good evening, everybody. My name is Stephen Kinsella. Um, welcome to ISE's uh, first webinar of uh, this semester. Um, we're very, very excited to have all of you here as a large number of attendees, and, and it's really, really nice to see everyone here. Um, I'm joined here by my colleagues, uh, Professor Tiziana Margaria, Dr. Simon Sai, and uh, the great JJ Collins, uh, to tell you more about ISE, what it is, and what you'll learn, um, how you'll learn, how you will interface with the companies, and probably most importantly for everyone watching this, how to get into the course. So let me just spend a second telling you what ISE is. ISE is a, a and, and the course that code that you're going to want to remember here is LM173. Uh, it's, a, it's a new kind of course designed around the philosophy of learning by doing. Um, you learn in studios. You were just taken on a tour of our brand new studio facility. So that doesn't look like any classroom you've ever been in. It doesn't look like any lecture theater you will ever be in. It's unique on the island of Ireland uh, to be in such a place. It's really, really remarkable to have this kind of facility. And this is just for ISE students. So it's the kind of place that you will be uh, working in if you're lucky enough to be here. So it's studio learning. You work on projects. There, there, there are there aren't there aren't sort of big lectures of hundreds of people. That's not our experience here. Okay, so so it's a very different experience, and and Professor Marguerite will tell you more about that in in a moment. There's no exams. It's all continuous assessment. Um, you get a master's degree in uh, under four years. Uh, I think we've worked it out. It's one thousand three hundred eighty-two days, which is really really remarkable. Spend half of your time in paid placements, which we call residencies. And Dr. Say will tell you more about that in a in a little while. Um, and most importantly, you spend half of your time working with really really gifted professors, really really amazing researchers. Uh, two of whom I have uh, to my left and uh, uh, and right. And of course, we we've got. Uh, uh, some absolutely wonderful uh, uh, um, projects that we're able to tell you more about. Uh, speaking of which, um, hopefully this will update in a moment. Speaking of which, if we can move the slide on. Uh, uh, we very often talk about, you know, finding something that makes you passionate, something that gives you lots of joy, something that, that yeah, you want to see uh, uh, in the world. But of course, um, uh, it's not, you know, your parents really want you to be happy, but they'd really like you to be happy with a well-paying job. Um, as an economist, uh, I, I'm quite used to talking about this kind of stuff. The graph that you're looking here shows your median income. Um, so that's up to 90,000 euros on the vertical axis. And the horizontal axis is years after graduation. You, the orange uh, uh, button shows, uh, the orange line shows your progression from, you know, your first year outside of ISE all the way up to five years later. And you can see the slope of the line shows that you're doing much, much better uh, than many other comparable prof professions like working as a GP, working as a dentist, working uh, as an architect or, or even as, as an accountant. Um, there, we don't put we don't put economists on this line because we don't want to shame them. It's a really really amazing uh, career that you get qualified in after only four years and then you can travel the world with. It's very very exciting, um, and we want to bring more people along uh, into this world because we think people who can make the future are the future fundamentally. Um, so moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh, We've got TEX, uh, a competition that we're running um, for fourth, fifth and sixth years um, across the whole island of Ireland. You can uh, uh, show us your project, win up to 5,000 in prizes. Um, it's it's really exciting. You, the closing date for it is uh, uh, this Friday. And so we're going to put the URL for this in the uh, in, in the uh, Q&A section so you can learn more about it. It's a really, really exciting project where you can start working on some of the portfolio material that might make up your submission uh, to ISE. You might win some prizes. You'll have some fun along the way. It's a really, really exciting thing to do. Um, and uh, just to remind everybody that uh, uh, just as a point of housekeeping, we're recording this session. So um, it, it's something that we're uh, very excited to share with everybody else. So uh, with that, with those two little plugs, you know, uh, it, it's a great, it's a great, it's a really innovative course, but it's a lot of work. So I might just pass over now to my colleague, Professor Tiziana Margaria, to tell you about the ISE way. And uh, with that, please, Tiziana, take it away. 
Thank you very much, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be here and be able as a course director to tell you we have our first 26 students in the course and they are here every day. Actually, there are still some uh, working on a project uh, uh, around the corner. OK, it's not because they have to, but it is because it is intensive. So it is not just immersive, but also intensive. You are basically with us every day, nine to five and sometimes even more. OK, the good thing is that you have access to the space basically all the time. And so um, you can basically um, arrange your uh, your workload in the best way uh, for you and for your team. Uh, an essential part is that we are working in teams. If you look at the pictures, you, you hardly ever see people, you know, sitting and listening, so to say. It is actually mostly in, uh, in teams, in groups. We started with a group project of two people in the team with one tool. Then we moved to another one. It was groups of five people basically creating a game. Now they are on the fourth project in uh, week six and there are more to come basically working at the moment with the professional development environment and working on Java. So it is a combination of actually a strong foundation track, which is going to provide all the um, uh, mathematical and other sound, let's say, basis for understanding not just the technology of today, but in particular the technology of tomorrow. We are very, very, very well aware that uh, the students that are going to finish in four years from now, they are going to live in, a, in an environment that has changed, for example, to low code, no code, for example, to the cloud, for example, to uh, DevOps, even ML ops and so on. So we are completely aware of this. And so the experience that we are offering to the students is the realistic, most realistic possible experience before they go into the companies. So what you see there is basically an environment that looks like a startup, feels like a startup, OK? And it is uh, uh, basically this kind of collective and collaborative form of uh, education and progression that we find actually in the software teams nowadays. So um, in uh, the next slide, you see actually what is the structure of the course. So you see the green part is the bachelor part of the integrated bachelor master, LM173 and then LM LK315. Um, uh, uh, the blue part is the master, so you see that it is actually continuing uh, without big interruptions. Um, you see that we have uh, activated the summer for all the first three years. And in fact, in the first two years, you're going to be in companies. In the last uh, summer, you're going to start already on the research method program for the master because it is going to be a strongly research oriented master. Um, you see that we have a, a large part of the um, year that is spent uh, in the first year in the uh, studio based environment, um, starting with modules that are actually blocks. So instead of having a number of parallel modules that are running more or less without any interdependency uh, and any connection within each other, we have blocks that actually bring together content from normally different subjects in order to have you understand the basis, understand how to apply it, and basically already produce outcomes while you're st studying the concepts uh, and the foundations. This is basically starting with the problem solving with computers. Actually, at the end of this year, this week, we are going to finish already that block and move into the next one, which is effectively building software with others. These are strongly foundation oriented and strong, strongly programming oriented. And then we are going to have in the second semester after Christmas um, data centric computing and computation and architectures one and two. These are all the topics that you need to know in order to be successful then in the companies, in the residencies and more of that uh, later. What you see is that here we have a structure where you have the immersive blocks in the university with us doing research and doing um, doing practice as well. And then they are inter interspersed, so to say, with the orange uh, uh, border, the blocks, which are the residencies. So that's the time that you are going to spend in companies. OK, so you see that we are actually having a very healthy ping pong of a long time for preparation initially in, uh, in the studio in UL then going to residencies, then coming back and learning human centric computing and ethical hacking and security, mm -hmm. going back again for a residency, coming back for uh, scaling and reliability and performance and computational thinking, and then going back and so on and so on to the companies. This is actually, uh, I would say, the sweet spot of uh, uh, foundations and practice 
also being able to um, to meet different realities in the different residencies because that's the way we organize it in the, in this case. I would basically pass to Salim in order to discuss the residency in more detail. OK, thank you very much, Professor Giona. Uh, residency is one of the main difference between OIC and uh, other computer science uh, courses. So we believe that a gap exists between uh, the things that students learn at university and the market, uh, because with residency, beside the methods of teaching that we have here in OIC, that we use a method of uh, learning by doing. Uh, so we consider that we fill this gap that students, the things that they are learning is directly uh, applicable in the market. So students study two semesters uh, in OAC and beside the concept and fundamental of computer science, they study how to work in the company in a real projects, and we teach them that how to start work with the company. And also uh, the companies, how, how do you start working with the companies? In this two semester, companies have to send proposal and students have to select one of the companies. In the same time, students work on their CV and they have to share their CV with the companies. So this is a mutual agreement between the company and the students, and then they have to start working with the company. So when we introduce students to the company, they will get paid. So it means they are like a normal employee of the company and they are starting working with the company. And in the same time that you are working with the company, they are in contact with the university professor with, with us, and we are supporting them how to work on any part that they have, uh, they need support, we supporting them. Uh, in the same time that you are working with the company, of course, they are getting a lot of feedback, they are learning from the company, the, the, I also become familiar with the culture of the, the environment with the companies and as well as the good point that the coming back and the coming back with most feedback and they know that okay what things they really need to uh, learn and we teach again and we uh, again we coming back how to work with the company and still we teach that that the parts that we feeling that they need to learn again so this is how they start working with the company, but they not working only with one company. During these four years, they working with uh, four or five companies, different companies, from small companies to big companies. They learn that how to work with a small company. They learn how to work with a bigger company. So they get enough experience working with different levels of the company, and as well as so we have, although we have the option to work remotely, that's an agreement between the company with the students, but we prefer if they work in the company to become familiar with the culture of the company, to, to, to work with the team and that things. So for each company that we introduce students, that's at least two students. So because first of all, they helping each other, and also in the same time, it's good for them to, okay, they, they become friends with others as well and work uh, with, with the other company members as well. So here you can see the slide. We have more than 40 companies that we have contract and we have agreement with them. We call them residency partners. And these partners, just uh, students select one of them but it's not one, but it should be uh, more than one. It means they have to change. If you are working with one of the companies, for example, if you are working with a strip, then next in re next residency, they have to change the company. So why we consider that? Because they have to get this experience to work with different companies and they, have, they can learn from different companies. So the companies also 
it's not the companies also have to select the students. So this is somehow during the this two semester that the students uh, uh, just uh, are in the OEC. In this time, uh, students presenting their projects to the companies as well and collecting feedback from them. So this is somehow they know the company in this two semester and companies know students. So I think this is all and the next part, the angel requirements. Uh, JJ Colin, talk about that. Thank you. Thanks, Salim. Thank you very much, Salim. So the dreadful entry requirements, the first bullet point there, I'm obligated by law to state it that effectively you need to pass the leaving certificate, but much more than that. So the second bullet point there is with respect to some of the key subjects, that being you will require H4 in mathematics. Uh, in 2000, uh, this year's CO points were 803, a little more about that in a minute. So next then is the portfolio. I, you'll appreciate from listening to the speakers up until now that LM173 Immersive Software Engineering, it's a very different teaching and learning experience to your typical undergraduate uh, course. So for example, it's intensive, it's accelerated. Our students go on residency at the end of first year and continue on into their second residency at the start of second year. So this is a, a very different in nature. And that prompted the ISC team to use portfolios as a vehicle, as a means of identifying those candidates with the competencies necessary to succeed and grow and develop within our environment. So the portfolio asks candidates two questions to illustrate their creativity, innovation uh, in the context of using technology to solve a problem. And the second then is a statement about notable achievements so that they can identify or we identify candidates with suitable you know, work ethic, culture, et cetera, that they can bring in to the learning environment to support their fellow students and drive uh, ISE forward. So there will be workshops on the our further webinars on on the portfolio for LM173 and the next one is in I think 28th of November of this month just a few weeks away and we'll go into it to, uh, further. So the portfolio is worth a total of 300 points on top of the 625 points for the leaving certificate. So that's a very significant uh, number of points. So the portfolio, the submission should be evidence based, providing examples of independent work, stress independent. So in that to illustrate the first question requires you to focus on creativity and innovation where you've used technology to solve a problem or to avail of an opportunity to help others in your environment, in your community, it could be your home, your school, etc. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessary that you have uh, to use programming as part of the rollout of the solution etc more about that in two weeks time the second question asks you to focus on achievements that you were really proud of and both of those questions will ask you to take a step back and to reflect to critique your work to reflect upon how we could how you could improve it to do it again this is how we learn in real life by reflecting on, on past achievements so the two so the two questions. Question one is approximately 1000 words. It's on the left there. It asks you to describe uh, a problem that you've solved using technology. Uh, you, the first bullet point there on the left, you cannot reuse any of the content submitted for leaving certificate projects. For example, in engineering and computer science, etc. We, we are very well aware that there are uh, significant submissions in those. Um, it should be independent work as well because what we're looking for here is students who can very quickly transition to life in immersive software engineering, which is to become a mature, independent uh, learner, etc. Evidence is very strong, evidence of the work you've done. So that might be in the form of a link in the submission to an, a repository or a folder in the cloud that can contain artifacts such as screenshots and design blueprints. It might contain, for example, GitHub visualizations, etc. Also in the submission, if you did develop uh, or use coding to develop a lightweight proof of concept prototype, a link to the GitHub repository would be good. Likewise for question two, 500 words, it's worth 100 points of, of the total 300 going for the portfolio. And again, we're requiring evidence 
of the achievements that you were just justly uh, proud of. And that evidence could be in the form of a newspaper article, a school magazine, it could be a blog that you've kept, uh, etc. So details on and uh, details on the specification and the grading rubrics are available on the ISE website. And just to draw your attention to the fact that the portfolio the specification, rather than being prescriptive, it's more descriptive. It gives you an opportunity to bring to interpret the spec and to bring your talents to bear and to shine for it. So the last. Uh, just a quick word on starting the portfolio. So, um, so, so the starting point can be you know, very challenging. Where do I start? I haven't really got a clue. What do I do? Well, the first thing is register for text that Stephen just talked about a while ago, and the closing date for registration is this Friday. So please do register. And in that, it's a short program that helps you to accelerate along the lines of developing a concept, move, moving from conceptualization to design, etc. And that's a good starting point. Also, our portfolio webinar 28th of November, make sure you join in that. We'll give sample uh, ideas for that and field questions in depth. Just a few other points for those who are starting out. A very sound software engineer or what well, engineering principle is keep it simple and that's necessary to deliver artifacts in a, use, in a timely manner that are useful. So, and do so in small steps. So maybe for the next two weeks, think about, well, what's the problem area I'm going to focus on? Where do I think there's an opportunity to contribute? And just focus on that. Other things, other pointers there um, are, are, are on the slide. Do not overcomplicate it, et cetera. So next I'm going to move on then to the timelines. So we have three submission timelines and they coincide with the CEO deadlines. So the first timeline uh, uh, is you will be emailed a link from UL admissions and that will provide guidance then on the submission process. So approximately the second week of March, you will get a link. Then you have up until approximately the second week of April to submit the portfolio and you get results back early May. So, uh, there's late applic applicants and they get to uh, link emailed out in the second week of May, they to the end of May then to submit results back to you in July. And then there's the change of mind. They get a link emailed to them from UL admissions uh, week two in July, they're to the end of July to our week three to submit and results shortly back there afterwards. So all this information is available on the ISE website. And again, just to repeat, text, and the portfolio webinar 28th of November. So with that, I'll hand back to my delightful colleague, Professor Kinsella. Oh, delightful. No, nobody ever calls economists delightful, but I'm, I'm totally taking it. Um, in order that we see the questions, because there's there's loads of questions coming in, I can't quite scroll down. So what I might do is just grab my laptop there, but I'm going to ask, um, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Tiziana, this is a question from Vipul, how has the experience of this year's batch been so far? Well, uh, good, Thank very you. intensive, of course, and uh, also with a lot of diverse uh, kind of tasks. Um, uh, well, we spoke already of the fact that they are now on the fourth uh, project. We are doing it supported by tools, uh, ideally with tools that are actually in use in the companies. For example, Eclipse, GitLab, GitHub and so on. We are going to have a CICD and all these kind of modern uh, practices because it is required then for their um, activity in the companies. So we are very much driven not so much by um, what are the most important concepts, so to say, to teach them in advance of the four years, but it is what is needed in order to understand what is happening in the companies right now and what is going to be the tendency, so to say, for the future. So this is basically necessarily a different selection of uh, uh, topics, a different combination of topics and a different way of, uh, of education. So we are typically all sitting in the lab, uh, spending time uh, with each other and uh, working in a, in, a, in a group way. Um, the other thing is that we have had a lot of visitors interested, so to say, in ISE, so they are also exposed, so to say, um, to, to visitors. I mean, you saw pictures, uh, it's, it's very recognizable. John, John Collison was here. Uh, we had other people um, uh, visiting us for this. So um, there is a component of exposure as well. And that's why we are, for example, training really intensively presentation. 
So on day four, uh, they were already presenting the first project. Uh, in the second week, they met for the first part, the representatives of the companies. They were actually presenting the second project to them. And so this is a component of professional readiness for the profession that is actually uh, delivered by us in collaboration with uh, the first AWS fellow, uh, Professor Barry Floyd from Cal Poly in the United States, who is an expert in this area. So all these um, pre professional preparedness skills that Salim mentioned before about the curriculum, about interview, about culture, uh, culture in companies and so on, is another track that is actually accompanying the technical track. Brilliant. Thank you, Tiziana. Very, very clear um, and comprehensive answer. Uh, Salim, are there different placements each year or just in the third year? Asked Tonika. Uh, no, for each residency, they will change. For example, if they go to the first residency in one company and the second residency, they have to change. The reason that why we consider like that, because they have to work with different company and learn from them from different team, from the big companies, from the small companies, from different, okay, the different domains. So this is for learning. That the goal of this residency is that they have to learn and to see their real uh, projects, real life, that what's going on in the market. And then because we, we are changing that, okay, this 10 weeks working in one, and then when you are coming back, and then we, we introduce to the second residency, that's the second company. Brilliant. Thank you, Salim. So uh, uh, Anonymous asks, what would the yearly capacity be for this course? Um, I'm not totally certain what you mean. Um, it, it, maybe you could ask another uh, question. And if, if you ask how long in the year, it's 40 plus weeks. So it's a very intensive course. You know, as Tiziana said, it's nine to five and often more than nine to five in the Monday to Friday uh, and sometimes later. You know, we expect a lot of commitment from these students, which is why the portfolio exists. On the portfolio, JJ, um, Anonymous asks, for the portfolio piece about something you're proud of, can you talk about the adversity you overcame? Yeah, thank you for the easy question, Stephen. Uh, and thank you, Anonymous, as well. Yeah, that would be a really good um, uh, backstory, actually, but also to really emphasize the successes that you had in overcoming that adversity. And um, what are the learnings that you have from that that you can apply going forward. So porting that to a different environment, for example, in a learning environment and immersive software engineering, what, what can you bring to that to not only help yourself, but also support your fellow students in their um, in their pathway through immersive software engineering? Very good, JJ. A uh, question um, Anonymous asks, how many points will the course have in 2023? The answer is we don't know. Um, the number, uh, we, we, we don't know. Uh, the, 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 we can tell you that the, 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 the points were 803 for this year, which is a combination of the 625 points for the regular leading cert and the 300 points for the uh, portfolio. So a very high point course uh, this year, but this year we had a, a, about 25 students. Next year, we're going to admit about 50. So it's going to get larger uh, e each year. So maybe points will drop. We don't know. It depends on the demand um, and the supply of, of students. The more of you that apply, the more high quality students we have, the higher points will be. And so uh, that that's the, the thought. One for Tiziana now. Uh, Danny asks, Danny T asks, how do you ensure that the projects that the students work on during their placements are meaningful and students aren't at risk of doing low level volume tasks that the engineers don't want to do? <laughs> good okay. question, Danny. That's really Very good, good question. Yeah. Uh, so there are a number of mechanisms about this. Uh, the first thing is that the companies that you saw uh, listed on the slide, they are actually members, members of a residency partnership membership network. In other words, this is not just any companies. But these are companies that are co-investing in the project. They are co-investing in the in the in the program. Okay, so they have the best interest of making the best out of the talent of the students. And the way that we do it is actually collaboratively. It is a much more collaboratively approach uh, to the residencies than in the normal co-op or internships in other courses in UL or in other in other uh, universities because uh, the companies are co-designing those projects with us. 
they are now these days actually submitting the proposals uh, along a, 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 a template that we gave them that includes also ticking which skills that the students are learning right now are going to be exercised into the, uh, the projects. OK, so that we can have a precise profile of what is going to happen with whom, uh, what are going to be the tasks and basically what of what has been learned is going to be useful there. And if there is not enough there, we are going to go back to the companies and tell them, look, we need to actually improve on this description. We didn't have this case so far, OK, but it may happen in the future. And so this is actually the way that we have to make sure that whatever is done in the in the study, in the in the immersive part, in the in the, in the university, of course, but also in particular in the companies is really relevant and meaningful. So when we say you're going to go into companies and to do real life projects, that's really meant you're going to be part of a team that is actually doing useful work. There is nothing that is created for the wastebasket. Brilliant answer, Tatiana. Uh, Anonymous asks, can I use a technology project as my portfolio submission? I'm going to assume the answer is no, JJ. If it's technology, the leaving cert, the answer is no. Uh, Emer asks, can you do an Erasmus? So we are working on that. So I'm uh, an old, you know, Pauter, so to say, of Erasmus, and you have been Erasmus coordinator for a long time. We are actually thinking on how to do that. Because if you're doing an Erasmus uh, uh, by means of uh, uh, using a residency slot, so to say, to go abroad, that may be possible and easy, so to say, in the context of the structure of the program. If you are expecting to go abroad, uh, take a random five courses and come back, that's going to be difficult to slot in because then we are actually expecting that you have acquired certain skills. And if you are acquired in order to go to the next residency, if you have acquired the different skills and maybe you are missing the ones that our uh, students on campus were doing, then it is a problem for you. OK, so this said, uh, in general, we are uh, trying to uh, make it possible. We are going to be supportive, but we don't have a mechanism in place right now. Thanks, Etienne. Uh, one for you, JJ. Fred asks, if you include a link to a GitHub repo with a README in your portfolio, is the examiner obliged to read this? Can this be graded? What about code comments? So we need code comments to illustrate a deep understanding of, of what the student has written. Um, because we're, I, I'm a born skeptic, so I will assume from the word go that, for example, this is a repo that has been partially cloned, etc. So I need evidence that at, at least there's a deep understanding and preferably in the actual submission itself where the student or the applicant will walk us through an excerpt of code that they're particularly proud of and might have been a little bit tricky for them to solve and explain to us what was going on. So comments are really important. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, so um, there is one part uh, in that question that is, uh, are the examiners obliged to look at these uh, uh, links? The answer is no. We are going to try to do it, but OK, uh, we are going to look for evidence OK, of what you're saying. And if we are convinced enough, then there may be corners, so to say, of what you um, what you link that are not going to be uh, completely explored. Okay. Yeah. Can I just add a point to that again? Just to stress that for question one, you don't if, not necessarily that you've developed a lightweight proof of concept prototype using a programming language. There are other many other projects or submissions we've had in the previous year that did not involve programming. Some did, and if by all means you have something there, we'd be delighted to see it. Fantastic. Thanks, JJ. Um, uh, uh, hello, is it possible, Anonymous asks, is it possible to participate in text if you're not from Ireland. So for this version, we have restricted it to Ireland and Northern Ireland, but uh, in a future variant, we really hope to make it more international. So for this one, it's just for the island of Ireland, if you like. Um, a, a question is, please, how about international students from Africa? You're absolutely more than welcome yes. to apply. Tiziana, do you want to say a little more about international yes, so students? We had a number of uh, applications from international students. So the definition of international students is basically non-EU students because the EU students are due to the EU regulations, so to say, they are considered to be equal, uh, so to say, um, to the Irish student. So we have an application for, from many continents and we have made offers to some of the students. So the only thing that I would say uh, for international applications, you're not bound to the CAO uh, deadlines. And given our experience, in particular in this in this year, so to say, in a number of cases with very, very long visa 
uh, granting times, okay, it would be better that you apply early through the uh, special channel that exists uh, through UL for the international students so that we can evaluate your applications uh, at the earliest possible. You get your answer and you can basically, if it is positive, you can basically get your, um, your uh, visa process starting immediately. I would like also to mention that uh, the places that we reserved for international students, uh, at least this year and probably also next year, they are on top of the uh, declared, let's say, a uh, number of uh, places, study places that go through the CAO. So mature students and the normal living cert students go through the CAO. Next year we are going to have 50 places open for this. International students are going to be on top of this. Fantastic. Thanks, Etienne. Um, Danny asks, how many points does the portfolio account for as a percent of overall CAO points? So it's actually a totally separate process, Danny. So the 625 points, the regular CAO, and you just do that as you would normally. And then we run a completely separate but parallel, obviously, process, um, which is the portfolio. That's worth 300 points. So the total number of points available for this course is 925. I hope that helps. Um, Samir asks, if we're to submit a project, uh, I guess this is for you, JJ. If we're sub to submit a project, would it have to be completed or can it be a work in progress? I'm assuming this is a portfolio now, Samir. If you want to um, uh, edit that question, if it's about task, text, please do say, but let's assume it's about the portfolio, JJ. Yeah, it can be a work in progress, but if you start it today, you'll five and a half months. And if you follow the KISS principle, you know, keep it simple. You should have a, you know, a deliverable in five and a half months that is near to completion. So don't, if you're starting today, don't overcomplicate and aim to have a deliverable artifact mid-April, which is the submission deadline. Thanks, JJ. Uh, another one for you. Could you use a mini company project, including technology for the portfolio? We get a bit of clarification yeah. from the applicant from the question. Yeah, right? please give us, a bit, give us a bit more. Give us a bit more. What do, you, what do you mean? Do you mean I set up a, if you meant I set up a company website selling cupcakes, you know, give us an example of what you mean. And if you have any questions about that, remember, we're doing a totally separate portfolio uh, webinar on the 28th of November, and we're really excited to do that one as well. Um, Anonymous asks, what was the average amount of points students achieved from the portfolio? Is it harshly marked? So we don't actually release those um, those marks. Um, uh, we don't disaggregate that like that. Um, it's not harshly marked. Um, there's nothing that's harshly marked. We, we, we evaluate it um, based on the, the, the grading rubric that we um, have made fully available on, on, on the website. Uh, if anything, we want to see you succeed. We're, we're on your side. Uh, 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 we want you to show your best work. It's really up to you to communicate how strong an applicant you are in the word limit that that's available. Um, so, sorry, let's jump forward there. Um, uh, how many places are there? So 50 places next year. Uh, what's the entry age bracket for the students? So Lynn, what's the entry age bracket? What would you say the average age of the students are? Okay, this year, have, out. Yeah, this year we have 17 and over 17. Yeah, so I don't know the maximum, but at least I think it 19 like. Yeah. No, we have we have mature students yeah. um, very successful. They are doing well. And so um, mature students is basically the definition is anybody above 23. OK, okay so matter. we basically accept yeah. anybody, whatever is your age, yeah. we don't we it doesn't matter. OK, as long as you basically demonstrate that you're going to be thriving in an environment like ISC. Very good. Oshin asks, what's the rate of pay of the residencies? And the answer is in, it's entirely up to the companies. Uh, it's unlikely you're going to be on minimum wage. Oshin, this is, these are competitive. Um, these are competitive, but uh, uh, it's entirely up to the companies and that's uh, organized when the placement starts. Can uh, I just add, Stephen, yeah, to please. that? We have offered guidance to the companies to take cognizance of location. So, for example, if you're in Dublin, we, we're all very well aware of the accommodation cost there. Mm. So companies will be taking that into the account. Yeah, very good. Thanks, JJ. Um, are we able, one for you, Tiziana, are we able to request an interview if we believe it would be more apt to explain our projects? Well, the answer is uh, no. So you cannot request an interview, but if we think that there is something that is unclear and we are uh, 
of the opinion, so to say, that it would be better to double check with you in order to be more correct and more um, uh, more adequate, so to say, to the um, to the grading rubric that we published, then there could be an interview. But uh, we expect hundreds of submissions, several hundreds of submissions. At least. It's just a matter of managing the work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lisa asks, oh, will the slides be available at the end of the webinar? Absolutely, Lisa. Um, uh, Vipul asks, what was the fraction of mature overseas to CAO students? Um, so there is in our head. no. OK, so there is uh, um, there is uh, a 5%, um, I think, uh, reservation of places for the mature students. Um, so up to 5%. Um, the um, uh, international students, we made three offers. Yeah, very good. Um, so it's roughly 4%. Uh, we had 25 uh, positions for the CAO. OK, mm -hmm. so 5% of this you can calculate yourself. And then the three offers were basically yeah, 10, 10 something percent Indeed. on top. Indeed. Uh, is it a nine to five course, five days a week? Yes, uh, as a minimum. Yeah. Um, Anonymous asks, what percentage of the students will get the MSC? We don't know. OK, we don't know. It's we don't know. Uh, it, this is a totally experimental course. It's uh, our, our, our plan is 100%. Our plan is 100%. Of course, of course, of course. So we, the, we hope they all get them, but you know. We, the BSc is actually considered, so we had to separate it uh, because of the uh, um, HEA based uh, funding that uh, courses receive. Mm -hmm. So the bachelors are supported in a different way from the masters. And so we had to separate those two components. But for what concerns us, it is an integrated bachelor master that's what we say all the time and actually it is conceived as a unique course of studies that is terminating with the master very good but do you have this option to exit and th at the end of uh, yes three. but that should be an absolute uh, case of uh, inevitable necessity yeah. okay mm -hmm. it is not uh, considered to be uh, an exit path not at all, okay? not not at all. No, no. but but to, to the specific qu question uh, this is the first time we've run it, um, so we don't have the statistics on that yet, but our hope is that 100% of zero, the students zero, that we see yeah. today stay until the end of the MSc, and we think we're delivering more than enough value for them to stay. Anonymous asks, does the project you're working on need to be totally unique, or would it matter if it was something that has likely already been made by someone else, even if you design the project yourself? What do you think? Um, I'm going to ask both JJ and Tiziana to answer this question. This is quite a... Like I, I think what you're getting at is you've you've you downloaded a repo, you've done something to it. It's not it is not entirely original, but I think that's what you're getting at. Um, but you need to show really what you've done. JJ, what's your reaction? Well, it, it depends on how the work is communicated. So what we're looking for, number one, is clarity, preciseness, and cohesion. Number two. I'd, I'd like to reserve my uh, decision on this, but at least if, if you're going to clone an existing uh, repository, um, that number one, you demonstrate an in-depth understanding, and number two, you add ex extensive value to it, and number three, that the new work that you've done is clearly mm, obvious to absolutely. the examining team here, the ISC team grading. Um, but I, I, I come back to this on the 28th of November when I've had time to reflect a bit more upon it. Thanks, JJ. Tiziana? And for me, I mean, I think that um, it should demonstrate the part that you have done yourself. And uh, if it is a group project, for example, it is extremely difficult to uh, districate, let's say, what has been done by one or the other. So in case you are starting from something that has been submitted somewhere, First of all, don't choose something that you did for school, choose something else. But if it was, for example, for a competition, BT yeah. Young, uh, Young Scientist. Scientist Award or something like that, OK, you would have to declare very clearly and give us links. This is what was submitted there. This is the next next part that I did for the, the portfolio. Mm. I did it myself and you will have to declare that you've done it yourself. And I, I note uh, now that there is a, um, an imperfection in the slides, so maybe we are going to, to uh, uh, change that. There are some people that are applying to ISC after having done some part of a university degree, so level three uh, oh. course. OK, so it's not only that you cannot reuse what you did for the Living Cert. You can also not reuse and resubmit something that you did in the course of a module at a different university. Otherwise, you could come here, go to LM one to one, do an entire year of computer science and then come here and basically say, oh, this is the project that I entered for the last yeah. for the second semester something. 
no, that doesn't work. OK, mm -hmm. and you will have to declare that this is original work that has not been used for any kind of educational purpose before. Very Can good. I just add to that, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. An alternative interpretation, maybe you're thinking about uh, developing a website to share school notes sure. with, with your peers, and that's been done quite a, quite a few times. But if, if you're doing this yourself and you're doing it from scratch and you're going through the design process or capturing requirements, going through the design process, a little bit of coding, uh, you might be using a power app to develop the web app, etc. Mm -hmm. And then you go through the process of deploying it and evaluating it. That, that ticks a lot of the boxes for us. OK, very good. Thanks. Uh, one for you, Salim. Do you think past experience in coding is essential for the course? It's not essential, actually. We can say there are students that you are coming and learning. We still, everything we starting from zero points. But if they have some knowledge about the uh, coding and that things, that's helpful. But we can say there that they are new students and we starting everything from the from the fundamental. Very good. Thanks, Salim. Um, uh, Vipul says my portfolio didn't get enough points that I could get through. I'm going to apply again this year. Thank you very much, Vipul. That, that's an incredible, um, that's an incredible uh, thing to say, and it's not something we take lightly that you're giving us that amount of time and, and that consideration. So it's that that's that's uh, kind of amazing to hear. Um, can I uh, the one for you? Say JJ. Um, can I reuse the existing portfolio? Change, augment some details in alignment to the requirements for this year? Yeah, as long as it adheres to the guidelines, it's independent work. Uh, you're the uh, you're the author of that particular work, etc. Then that ticks the boxes. Thanks, JJ. Uh, one for you, Tatiana. Can you give examples of what people submitted to the portfolio last year? Uh, no, because we are not disclosing this. Uh, but for example, uh, you can look at uh, the description of what people submitted for text, mm -hmm. and that's uh, um, let's say a good proxy for examples of uh, very different uh, kinds of technology, very different kinds of personal contribution. I think it went from uh, uh, writing something about the technology. It was almost a novel about technology oh, yeah. uh, to somebody that implemented. I think that the winner was uh, Butala, he, um, he did a, um, a system that is translating from um, uh, tactile signal lang language, sign language, yeah. sign language for um, uh, to another language, to mm -hmm. English uh, and to, to different, so to say, kinds of language. So that was pretty fantastic. There were other things that were, you know, yeah. more general technology, so to say. So it's, it's the entire span. Very good. Can I give one example of a project that I would not recommend? And that's building a PC from scratch. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we got a few of those submitted last year, and I'm very well aware that there are thousands of websites. Uh, you click on the order button and it'll deliver all the hardware components to your door, and then you follow a step by step guide. You don't need to understand just if you, you know, an, an automaton could follow it, and hey presto, you've got a PC. Um, if you're going to do something like that, you need to, what was the original motivation, for example, um, I want to play games and why would a PC deliver a better gaming performance? And then you might have to do a deeper dive into GPU, that type of thing, etc. But just the fact that I built a machine, it, it doesn't um, generate any of the signals that we need to identify for competency. And I think just to build on that very slightly, that's another one of the reasons why we're not releasing the portfolios from last year. We want to see your creativity. And if we show examples of what worked last year, we'll, everyone will simply rail on to work the last time. Um, around how many points is needed from just the leaving cert, 625 points? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Um, yeah. You could have 580 points um, from the leaving cert and get 300 points in the portfolio, and you'd, you, 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 you'd obviously uh, uh, Get, get above, you get 880 points, you'd be fine. And so we, we, our idea is that we want to use the portfolio as an extra signal because we think a lot of the students are going to be uh, up and around the 600 uh, plus point mark anyway. Sarah asks, when are you considered a mature student? I believe it's 23? 23, above 23. the age of 23. Yes. That's right, that's right. Donatia asks, are, these, are there supports for students with autism, especially when going on placement? Tatiana. So uh, there are in UL supports for students with autism. There is actually an entire autism research mm -hmm. group um, that is very active. And uh, of course, uh, the, the UL um, uh, disability services, uh, so to say, are, are really uh, exceptional in this case. Uh, concerning the companies, 
if a person with autism is declaring, so to say, and making it known to the companies, then the companies will know that there is this condition. Um, many companies have actually championed uh, inclusion, mm -hmm. uh, equality, diversity and inclusion. And so we can expect that especially those companies will be particularly supportive uh, to people with any kind of uh, needs. Indeed, and it's not just autism, you know, I, I, I think I think a, a key, a, a key uh, point of the University of Limerick is we're very sensitive to um, um, all kinds of additional and special needs. And, you know, uh, I, I think that's, that will certainly be true for many of our partners. Uh, Lisa asks, will a portfolio be a requirement each year of application in 24-25? Yes, yes, absolutely, Lisa. Well, great question. Ruri asks, why can year 13 and 14 students in the north not apply for techs? What is year 13 and 14? The fifth year and sixth year. Um, good question, Ruri. Good question. Didn't you say that it is open? We yeah. Yeah. I think we just said it was open to everybody in Northern yeah. Ireland. So I'm just going to make it. We, we look yeah, into that. Yeah. Straight up, I, I'm pretty sure, Rory, if you're in year 13 and year 14, just apply. Um, uh, I think I think that's fine. We're going to look at it. Um, Emer asked this one for you, Celine. Mm -hmm. Are all com are the companies all around Ireland or mostly based in Limerick? Uh, no, it's all the Ireland, even the international uh, companies. Dale is not from Ireland. You're from uh, USA. So we have international company, local companies and different types of the companies. Very good. I mean, you'll do if you work, if you go to Meta, you'll be working in London. If you go to Watershed, you'll be working in Ontario. Many of the companies that we're uh, uh, partners with are have bases in San Francisco. Uh, you might go there. It's it, it's really uh, uh, up to uh, up to them. So it's all over the country and obviously a lot of them are in Dublin. Um, one for Tiziana, uh, can international students be enrolled at the age of 16? OK, so um, there is nothing speaking against the younger students. The one thing that uh, the international office looks at is the equivalence of the um, uh, high school degree that the, the students have received uh, with a living certificate in Ireland. And in many countries, uh, um, this equivalence is not given. And so those students would have actually to spend a foundation mm -hmm. year here in UL before they can actually apply uh, for the course. OK, but it would be for any course. So it is nothing specific, so to say, to ISE. Yeah. It is just the normal rules. But if a younger student through advanced placement or whatever, so to say, has achieved the equivalent of the living certificate at a younger age, I would not know of anything that uh, uh, speaks against mm -hmm. enrollment. The key, the key there, and we actually dealt with this this year, is the equivalency uh, with the leaving certificate. So that's important. Helen asked, do you accept DARE applications? The answer is yes. Uh, Patrick, one for you, JJ. If we want to keep our GitHub repos private, how are we to invite the ISC team to review them, allowing them to see all the commits, et cetera? That's a difficult question. Um, I, I think you have to clone it. Uh, in, in GitLab, etc. We have to have visibility mm. so that we can actually grade it. Um, otherwise, we have there's no way we can possibly grade it. So you need to think about that. If, if you're developing uh, something that with commercial potential with a lot of proprietary logic, you might think about a, um, taking that out of the clone and just putting in some default um, statements, etc. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Or, or, or just. A new repo with only that project, so yeah, to say. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Which is which is which is, which is the other thing. Anonymous asks: Is the hard is the course hard to get into? And how many applications or entries for the course were there last year? Um, so you can see the demand for the course is very high based on the number of points available. Uh, Anonymous, um, we don't release how many applications we got um, each e each year. That that's that's not um, a piece of information that we share. Um, but I think it's fair to say a lot. Is that fair? Yes. A lot. Yes. A lot. Yes. yes. A lot. It's competitive, so I <laughs> yeah. think um, there are minimum requirements, okay, listed. Yeah. But if you're barely mm, touching the minimum requirements, uh, this year there was no chance, and next year probably similar. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, does the course allow for? Part Richie asks. Uh, Salim, does the course allow for participation in other college activities like sports, etc., getting immersed in college life? Of course, that's <laughs> that's the university life. You can participate to anything, but the, the requirements of the ISC is that you have to complete the the, the, the projects and the assignments and the lecture times. You have to participate on that. Otherwise, of course, you can participate to any other university activity. Thanks. Uh, 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 Tatiana, any? Yeah. So, for example, we have hours that are basically consultation hours. Yeah. 
So at the beginning, not so many because we are actually busy, uh, you know, teaching the fundamentals, but they are going to increase. And so in those hours, I mean, if you don't need them, you can just do whatever you want. In particular, go to the sports or participate to the uh, clubs. OK, yeah, just to add, strongly encourage people to look at, for example, the Computer Society, the Orienteer, they have meetings in the evening, the Orienteering Society, um, they have weekends away, etc. We have a lot of students, I know from other courses in the college, various sports such as windsurfing, etc. And we Taylor Swift Appreciation Society. <laughs> that's, your, that's your particular society. I know, I know, I know, midnight's for the win. Yeah. Um, so uh, does the course allow for, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry yeah. that. If coding isn't necessary, are there any examples of the kind of projects that could be used in the portfolio? Have a look at the text jointext.org, you'll get a very good sense of it. And finally, our last is our second last question. Oh, geez, we've got a few. OK, right. We're going to go through this very quickly because we, we promised everybody we'd finish, we finished at 8 o'clock. Um, uh, Samir asks uh, for you, Tiziana, would a fully functional compiler for a custom language be considered a unique project? In case you have done it yourself, yes. Good if answer. If it is cloned for somewhere else. Mm -mm. No. Uh, what programming languages do you learn in the course, Salim? Uh, we teach actually the concept and the fundamental, but uh, mostly Java or Python. Java, we start with Java. Very good. Anything else to tell? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the point is that uh, learning the fundamentals basically means that the moment you have to go from Java to Scala or to JavaScript or to Rust or any other kind of uh, fancy language that uh, the various companies are going to invent between now and then, it is going to be very easy for you because you're actually going to become a multi-language interpreter, like somebody of these uh, translators of the EU that are speaking seven languages, right? When you have the eight, it's easy. Very good. Yeah. Given the past experience in coding is not required for the course, does that mean the portfolio does not require coding projects, JJ? Just, just to clarify, it does, yeah, yeah. Correct. But if you have a coding project, it takes the boxes with respect to independence and not previously submitted for a graded assignment, then by all means use that. Very good. Anonymous asks, are you able to disclose the amount of applicants that were there for the course last year to give us an idea of the amount of competition there will be? I'm sorry, we don't. Uh, we, we, we Well, that was for last year. So we do know how many uh, applicants we had last year. Um, we don't disclose the number, but su uh, suffice to say, uh, demand was strong. Uh, are there any companies in Dublin doing residencies? Absolutely, there's there's loads of them. Um, can you register for tax now uh, if you wish to apply in 2024? Yes, of yes. course. Please do. That would be fantastic. Are scholarships available? Uh, Tatiana, do you want to talk about the scholarships yes. very briefly? So uh, there are the normal scholarships that every student actually can have, but we have two companies, Intercom and uh, um, Transact, Transact. Transact Campus, exactly, that have given us uh, two specific uh, scholarships, one for girls and one for general EDI, so equality, diversity and inclusion. Yep. And so these are actually for students admitted to ISC that are going to perform very well in the first module that is about to finish, so mm -hmm. to say, and uh, basically uh, meet the requirements. OK, so they are girls or in the other categories. Very good. Uh, final one um, re uh, regarding text. Do we have to develop a project specifically to submit or can we submit long time projects which have been started before the entry date? JJ. I can submit projects that have been started before the entry date. The purpose of text is just for the students to demonstrate an improvement over over the period of that particular, uh, is it four weeks or five weeks? Four weeks. Yeah, so you can take something that you've already worked on and you're looking at some particular aspect of it and adding to that, etc. Very good, very good. And just a reminder again, the text actually closes on Friday, November the 4th at 12. So please sign up for it. It's a really, really cool experience. We have an amazing uh, ceremony, January the 6th of this year. Um, really, really brilliant. Um, you know, and that's 12 midnight. So, you know, uh, you know, we, 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 we have a very, very good sense that you know, there's going to be a few people who like nights. Uh, who, who are going to be here. So please sign up. And we're very interested in the quantum and the change from it. So if you work in a long run project, um, say you're working on a, a, a novel, right? And you've got 15 chapters done. Well, we're going to take, we're, we're interested in how you get from chapter 15 to chapter 20 over the four week period. We're really interested in the increment and the change in behavior. So if you've, if you've written your own, if you've written your own compiler, for example, and you've already have that done, uh, we're, 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 we're interested in the change that starts from the first week of text and ends on the last week. So we're interested in the slope of that line and your reflective feedback um, from that. Any final words, 
colleagues. Salim? Uh, no, I think we discussed a lot. <laughs> we have indeed. We have indeed. We've we've gone through sixty one um, okay. uh, questions. Sixty one questions, which is which is really good. Um, all right, very good. Uh, there's there's three or four questions here, folks, but I'm really sorry. We have to finish it up. Um, uh, JJ, final words for you? The five residencies, 50% of the course, they're paid. Each residency has specific learning outcomes, so you'll be doing something really useful, working with the world's best companies on, on solving thorny problems. Fantastic. Tiziana? And for me, of course, I have to uh, to defend the UL and not just the companies. Uh, the time that you're going to spend with us is not going to just be with us or with the new people that we are hiring at the moment. Uh, it is going also to be with international experts funded by the fellowships, uh, the I AWS ISE Global Fellowships. We have a long list of really people with a pedigree that is absolutely astonishing that are actually uh, likely to come and join us. So they will work with the students, they will work with our assistants, they will work in, with us in research that's unique, even more than the resi residencies, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah about the residency, one thing I missed, uh, uh, the students who are graduating in four years, they have already two years uh, work experience. So they graduate with two years work experience as well because they are working with the company and they already have two years experience. Fantastic. And look, all, all I can just convey to you as a final word is just how exciting ISE is. It's incredibly exciting. Um, we started working on this in February 2019. The first students arrived only a few weeks ago. Um, it's a brand new uh, initiative with brand new things like the AWS Fellowship uh, uh, Tatiana was talking about. There's a lot more new stuff in the pipeline uh, we're just dying to tell you about. Um, so uh, please stay tuned. Remember, there's another portfolio webinar on November the 28th, so please sign up for that. And thank you all very much for your time and attention and have a good evening. <laughs>